What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmondson here from Schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be looking at how to create custom section dividers like this one in Squarespace. So this effect is actually really easy to achieve. It just takes a little bit of setting up beforehand. So here you can see I have my regular index section. It's just straight across on the top as always. And the only thing I've done so far is I've made this ingredients section's background orange, this orange color. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be placing an image and positioning it above this section with the before pseudo element. So to get started, we first have to create our image that we're gonna be placing in there. So I came into Photoshop and I just did this like jaggedy, really rough mountain design. So I, I did it super quickly because it was just for the tutorial, but I'd recommend, you know, spending some time on it. And the image dimensions are 2000 pixels wide by 100 pixels high. And the reason I chose 2000 pixels wide is because that's what Squarespace recommends for their banner images. And then the reason I chose 100 pixels high is because if I jump into the section itself, you can see that the section is 633 pixels tall. So I just thought like 100 pixels would be like one sixth of the section height. So I felt like that was going to be a good height for my mountains. So if you are going to follow along and create your own design, just go ahead and make a document that's 2000 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall, and then just draw whatever design you want to be your section divider. And it's really important that you make the background image the exact same as the background color of the section, otherwise it's gonna look really funky. Okay, so then once you've done that, just go ahead and save that image, and now we can start writing our CSS. So we're gonna use the before pseudo element, and we're going to position the image above this section here. So if you're not familiar with pseudo elements, I recommend you go check out my how to underline titles video because in that video we use the after pseudo element to place lines below titles, and I go into a little bit more depth there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in. The way that we add our pseudo element is I'm gonna write an ampersand within the curly brackets for this section, and that's just a shortcut. That's the same as saying hashtag ingredients before down below. This is just a little shortcut. If you write an ampersand within another IDs or classes curly brackets, then it's essentially saying hashtag ingredients before. So little shortcut there. I'm gonna add my content property. Whenever you're using a pseudo element, you have to always include the content property, even if you're not gonna be writing anything inside those quotation marks. So next, I'm going to give this pseudo element a width of 100% because we want our image spanning the whole full width of the browser. And I'm gonna give it a height of 100 pixels because that's how tall we made our image. So next we can actually add our background image. So I'm gonna give a background image property and I'm gonna write URL and then open up some parentheses and then I'm gonna add my semicolon. Now we're going to be adding our image to the manage custom files window here. So when you're gonna add custom files, you wanna make sure you click between the parentheses wherever you want the URL, click manage custom files, go ahead and locate the image that you made. Here's my mountain range. So it loads the file here and then if I click on it, it's going to insert the URL wherever we had the cursor before. So that's why it was important to click between those parentheses. Okay, so now we have the image loaded, we just can't see it yet. Um, and that's because we have to give it a position on the page, and we're going to position it absolutely relative to this container. And the last thing that we have to do is give it a margin top of negative 100 pixels. And I also have to come up here to the ingredients section and I have to give it an overflow of visible because by default, uh, the overflow on any index section is set to hidden. 
So because we want this, our mountain range to appear outside the bounds of the normal section, we have to change the overflow to visible. And what this margin top did is by default, the top of the mountain ranges are just right here. So by adding a negative margin top that is equal to the height of our images, it's just gonna push them up by 100 pixels. And now the bottom of the image is at the very top of the section. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so now you can see that was so easy to, to achieve this effect. We just have to work on the background image properties to make sure that it looks good across all screen sizes. Right now it's not resizing at all and that's fine. If you don't care if it resizes or not, um, it's just gonna like cut off the mountain range. I think it looks fine for something like this. Um, but I want to show you guys, you know, if it's really important for the whole design to be in the frame, I'm going to show you guys how to position the background image. So let's drop down below our URL and let's add some background properties. So for the background size, we're going to set it to contain. And this just means that the full width of the image will always be contained within the window. So if I bring it down to tablet view, you can see the full width. It's not getting cut off like it was before, but the problem is it gets really, really small vertically because it's shrinking down to get the full width in the frame. And you can also see it's repeating a bunch, so that doesn't look very good. So the next thing that I wanna do is make sure that it doesn't repeat vertically. If anything, if the window gets really big, then we want it to be able to repeat horizontally we don't want it to repeat vertically like this so for the background repeat property I'm gonna set it to repeat X so it only repeats on the horizontal axis if it needs if it needs to and then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a background position of bottom and that means that uh, it will always stay on the bottom of the container. Okay. So now you can see our design will always be 100% of the width, no matter what screen size it's on. So that way none of our design is ever getting cut off. So you guys now have multiple ways uh, to position your image uh, in terms of its scale across. You can just have it be always, you know, 100% height, but have the sides get cut off, or you can have it always be 100% width and have the height uh, just get a little bit smaller. So it's totally up to you guys. Uh, the other thing that you can do is we can add a media query and control. So maybe we like that it has 100% of the width in the frame here, but on tablet, we don't like that it starts to get really small like that and we want it a little bit bigger. Well, we can just write a media query inside of this pseudo element so we can control the background size on different screen sizes. So for example, I really like how it looks on desktop, but on tablet, it starts to get small. So I'm gonna write a media query at media screen and max width equals 800 pixels so this is targeting the tablet from tablet and lower this effect will be applied and for the background size I'm gonna set it to like 200 percent and 50 percent so this first value is the width and this value is the height so we can control the background size on different uh, screen sizes. So now they don't quite as get as, it gets cut off on the side a little bit, but it, it doesn't get quite as small as it was getting before. And then on mobile, you can see it looks nice now without the media query really small with the media query looks much better. So that is how you create those custom section dividers in Squarespace. It's such a simple effect and an easy effect, but it really takes the design to that next level. All right, guys, that's it for me. I will see you in the next one.
Quick announcement that I want to share is I'm about to release this cool footer reveal plugin on my shop. So I see this on a lot of like agency sites. I think it's a really cool effect. So if you guys are interested in it, you can go check out my shop. The plugin should be there now and fully responsive. So when you go down to mobile, the footer is normal, but then on anything bigger than mobile, the footer does that cool reveal effect. I spent a lot of time developing this one, but um, it's only gonna be like $20, $25 or something like that. So, and I don't care, you guys can use it on unlimited sites. Um, so if you think that's a cool effect and you wanna do it on your websites, I'm gonna have that plugin available in my shop. All right guys, that is the end of this tutorial. Have a good one, I'll see you in the next one.